our friend Raul just bought this new Beneteau first. You've scored a, an excellent boat in our yes. opinion. Everything because uh, it's the fault of uh, Robinson, actually. The fault of Robinson. <laughs> Fate would have it that Raul bumped into Robbie at the local marina. And I asked him if he uh, knew of any beautiful and perfect sailboat uh, in a range of price that's not too uh, expensive. And yeah, he told me, you know, Albatros, and he did this. And she's definitely that, with a comfy open-end cockpit and tiller steering. And it's the first uh, sailboat I, uh, I get, so yeah, it's a big thing for me. Like, it's a good size for beginning. I mean, we can kind of feel that the keel the, the canal is quite shallow here and, yes. and the boat is a little bit like stuck in the mud at the dock here. Yeah, it's but a she's small enough that you can kind of manhandle yeah, the sure. boat a little bit. Yes. Um, but she's also big enough that you can sleep inside. There's a couple of cabins, a couple of berths. Uh, yes, I am, I'm really happy because yeah, you're completely right. It's not that big that it will like, like uh, you both put it, overpower you as a person. She came with an autopilot that needs to be rewired and doesn't have a huge fee worth as you can see. Well, I'm not really tall, I'm Mexican. <laughs> but yeah, I have enough room, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It feels comfortable, it feels... Uh, it feels... Uh, for me right now, it's, it's difficult to uh, describe the like the specifics because everything I see for me since it's my first boat is new and exciting so I'm mo mostly uh, shocked in the good way that I, 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 I'm standing on a boat right that's <laughs> mine I'm on a boat I still need to have some work to you know to leave the boat and to sail it properly but yes we, we have enough room in here for maybe a couple we have a small nap station in here it's uh, it's shocking in a nice way because I've dreamt of this uh, my whole life, and uh, now it's it's uh, it's finally uh, a reality. A reality. Yes. So the boat is basically built by Beneteau, but uh, the design is by German Freer. It's a very simple, old, tiny racer cruiser. They don't make them like these anymore. Basically, 30 feet, comfortable, fast. In this initial phase of enthusiasm for the new boat, we checked out the three Hank on sails and tested out some other gear before embarking on a small shakedown cruise with Raul and his two friends Jennifer and Tanya. I did a little bit of a quick orientation about minimal safety on the boat. You have to be always thinking about the boat. And then we were off in great weather conditions to clear the exit of the canal. This would be a cruising lesson of sorts for our friends. And I'll try my best because I'm a city boy trying, trying to turn into a sailboard. If you see a green light, you're going to the you're right, from board to server. Can I see it right? So it makes sense. Do I pass it, son? These days you can find a lot of uh, information online and YouTube, right? Yeah, you can learn everything today in your computer, right? Did you take a course yet or...? I took, yes, I have more than a course because, you know, I've heard this like formal uh, United States like Marine Academy so and yeah. I haven't been to one never. But I've been to the Mexican... Uh, so you're learning a bit today? Yes, and every time I go in, in, on a boat, on a sailboat, I try to learn. Actually, I learned when I was a kid, uh, optimist. Ah, yeah. uh, okay, yes. Laser sailing. A meal for time. Go, Rory! Go! Go, man, it's yours! Right. It could also be a mountain of sargasso. It was yeah. like a mountain, a massive sargasso. The only thing is, it's not coming in the surface, so it might be a fish. It looks like a Colorado. fish and a ball of uh, sargasso oh. together. Yep. Oh, That's why. Hot. I think the fish is small and, and the bowl of sargasso is doing all the fish. But it hasn't dropped. That's really weird. Yeah? Because it can't with the sargasso. Yeah, it got a... No! Up, yeah. oh. The sargasso really? released. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> As you can see, I fall it very well. <laughs> are you? Are you feeling a little bit like queasy? Oh, or yes. You've been to Cozumel all the time. But this is going to be different perspective. Yeah, it's so different. Oh, I just realized actually. It will be my first night. We, 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 have, nice. we have enough draft on this boat and the morning on the nice one where the sand is. We passed all the usual sights here in the waters between the mainland and Isla Cozumel. Okay, 
These parachute boats can be sneaky and cut in front of your sailboat to give the guests an interesting but dangerous view. This was really going to be just a quick trip, so we sailed into El Cielo for a dip in the clear water. And then we were off to anchor close to the cruise ships. The anchorage around the downtown Cozumel area is pretty sketchy, without very much protection, especially from panga traffic and ferries buzzing about. We had a close encounter with some submerged concrete blocks closer to shore as well. But despite the busyness of this location, the water still manages to mesmerize. The next morning, the weather was perfect again. The lines go in before the sails go up, man. And we headed back towards Puerto. Tanya, like I usually am, was surprised by the lack of sea life. You can fish every day. That is a lie because we didn't fish and we didn't catch anything yet. Oh, we caught one. One, but it but got away. I am very... I had a scare about the sharks, really. You yeah. watched Jaws too many times. Yeah, probably like me. I watched Jaws yes, but and I... that didn't catch anything? I say, oh my god, and where are they? Sharks. Everybody's got their their guess. No, no now it's different. Yeah, now we're in five point six. Oh, 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 oh. 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 We're now at seven. <laughs> by zero point one. I bet. Yes. Oh, but now it's five. Between five, six. five and six. That's we're going pretty fast. <laughs> when we surf down the wave, we're yeah. going fast. That's fast. Yeah. In the final home stretch, we finally had our first seasickness, as well as something on the line. Wow! It's beautiful, and the fish and the color of the fish is so beautiful. It's amazing how the nature do. Beautiful things. This was also around the time where we discovered that the engine was overheating. Doing the entrance of the sail this time. The impeller of the engine, I think, needs to be replaced. The engine's overheating, so we don't want to fuse our engine, and so we're coming in by sailing and just turning on the last second to dock. So fun. No, no boats, no another perfect. <laughs> we'll just scull it all the way in. Yeah. We had a chance to get back on a smaller cruising boat on Albatross. And I guess it just kind of seems appropriate maybe with our experience of having now, having lived on and cruised on several sizes of boats, that we kind of give our two cents about um, the four sizes. I, my first boat was 20 feet, about 20 feet. Then we had my way together 24 feet. 24 feet yeah we had rosa 33 feet now we're on an, an esperado at almost about 40 feet so the main question is is bigger better the obvious answer is yes that bigger boats are definitely more comfortable and they definitely make you feel safer at sea it doesn't make you feel like oh I, waves have to be bigger for me to feel more at at the mercy of the elements. It takes more wind. It takes more wind start... and things generally will have a harder time breaking. When stuff goes bad, like you know, you lose a mast, you lose a shroud, you lose your rudder, your engine dies on you. One of the five thousand things and one of the million things that can happen to you in a boat, you will generally have a harder time fixing it. That's what I found. It would cost you a lot of money fixing it, you know. From what I've had experienced 
for example, on my way when we did lose the rudder, I felt the only reason we easily, not easily, but fairly easily got out of that situation without, you know, calling the boat a, a total loss was because we could jerry-rig some kind of rudder on, on a boat that size and it made it easy to jerry-rig on a boat that size. Well, if we had a big 40-foot boat, we would probably have done what most people do with the 40-foot boats and pull the EPIRB and... Yeah, you might have had to call for help. You might have had to call for help or for a tow or for some expensive service. It might have been the end of the boat. Yeah, and um, we're lucky it was Transom Hung. That also really helped. And Transom Hung, we, we like that kind of rudder for that reason now that you've had that experience. Obviously, the, the benefits of a small boat, easy to get out sailing, faster to get out sailing, more economically easy to get out sailing. Big boat is obviously more comfortable and things tend to break less easily just because it's more robust. But at the end of the day, now that we've kind of had a boat in the 20 foot range, 24, 30 foot range, 40 foot range, would you, like how do you answer the question of would you go for the bigger boat or would you go for the smaller boat? That is actually a very difficult question. <laughs> it's a difficult question because I personally am a small, small boat lover. I felt I would have done a lot more traveling if we had kept, you know, on the smaller boat size. This 40 foot boat has been intimidating. It's also been one of the boats that has needed some of the more ex expensive aspects of it. If, you know, for example, if you're out looking for a boat and you have the question, do you get a, a smaller boat or do you get a bigger boat? The, the answer will always be, oh, get a bigger boat. It's more comfortable. It's more, it's more. I would not recommend first timers to get anything above to 10 meters. Like, like if it's your first boat, I highly recommend people to go with boats in between 8 to 9, 10 meters. Boats that will physically not overpower you. Boats that you do not need a winch to pull up the sails, that you don't need a winch to trim the sails, more or less. Boats you can lift up the anchor by hand. Boats that, you know, like a small boat, you generally have about 5 feet of draft or less. So it means you can literally, if you hit something or you you... You, you beat yourself, you can literally jump off the boat and push the boat, unless you have and, a... Uh, yeah, I mean, for cru for general cruising, I agree with you yeah. with that. And yet, at the same time, I feel like I've, I've seen a lot of people who were, have been saved by the size of their boat. You are being small the, or being big? Being big, like, by, by the boat being large enough to not uh, succumb to storm situation because the boat was large enough to kind of shield from, uh, yeah, from weather. <laughs> They've kind of been saved by the boat being bigger and more robust. I would definitely take a smaller, more affordable, in better shape, small boat. Yes, over that is definitely. Bigger, a bigger boat that needs more work or is not of good of, of a design. You know, a lot of people will see a gigantic boat. It's it, it hasn't been upkept because somebody else couldn't afford to upkeep it, and it's in bad condition or it wasn't a very nice design. And they go, oh, well, that's worth my money. That's you know, I've got a couple thousand bucks. I might as well spend it on the bigger boat rather than the smaller boat. And I can see how that's very tempting, but I would I would generally recommend going smaller. If that's your budget, generally go smaller for something that's in better condition. That's that doesn't. And need buying a the boat is we also have to remember is step one. You will almost always spend more money on the boat than what you've paid for yeah, it. Yeah, that's been so. our experience too. But what I, what I tend to see that happens a lot is there are either small boats out there that people think, oh, this that boat's not big enough to cross oceans, so I'm not going to get a small boat. Uh, because even if it's in really good condition or it's a really good design, 24 feet, that can't cross an, cross an ocean. And then they'll go for the bigger boat, which is in no shape to be crossing oceans either, and it never gets around to crossing ocean because yeah. it's not an appropriate boat either. With all this in mind, I think that we can both kind of agree it's more the design of the boat, uh, the build of the boat, for example, when we were looking for a boat before we were on here on, on in Esperado, we weren't saying, 
oh, we're going to get a 40-foot boat, and it's going to be this or that or that. We were just thinking it should be in relatively good shape or it should be a good design. We generally don't focus on the length of the boat. We generally yeah. think about the design aspects first. Well, I, I have one condition, which is I have to stand in it. There's that, yes. And then there's, uh, I guess, the final say on length of boat would be without standing headroom and living on a boat and cooking on a boat you're likely to get some bad back pain if you can't stand up within your own boat so that wasn't a problem for me but that was a problem for you to my point a boat is as only as good as how well it can take you fishing according to me <laughs> so that's why for me the catamarans can be the funnest of fishing because they have the bottles back you can put lots and lots of fishing lines behind them like five or six lines in the water, no problem. Yeah, and then there's multi-hulls for and that then there's aspect. multi-hulls, which are great for fishing. And my favorite ones are the ones with the, the red red heads, which what I call I call the bloody head. Closey. Closey. For being a bear though, it's great fun. 